All right, let's be honest, a terrible night for LSU football here in Oxford. I'm Jacques Doucet along with John Eads. The Tigers now have two losses before we flip the calendar to October. This was a squad that came into the year top five nationally ranked, had aspirations of winning uh, the SEC championship and uh, making the college football playoff. And uh, tonight, John, it's, it's all about really defense. I know we can point to some things late in the game that LSU did offensively that could have salted away the game. Perhaps they could deliver a knockout punch. But uh, when you give up 55 points and you give up over 700 yards of total offense, that's hard to uh, not point your finger at that and say, this is why we lost. Yeah, and I mean, Brian Kelly tried to say, hey, on offense, maybe we could have executed a little bit better. Maybe there's a couple of situations where we could have called a different play or just converted on a third down and a fourth down, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's the defense. It's obvious. They didn't even need to watch the game to know that. They couldn't get stops in the first half. They couldn't get off the field on third down. And that's something that you talked about going into this game that, hey, this defense is struggling on third down, the money down. They didn't make plays there. And then in the red zone, did they hold Ole Miss to a field goal at all? If they did, it was rare. That's kind of a difference in the game, too. Kind of bowing their necks. They've shown the ability to do that in some games this year, but not tonight. Yeah, and some of the local talk radio or message boards or whatever, some of the fans have said, hey, we need to play that guy and we need to play that guy and get that guy. Well, guess what? Tonight, that guy played and right. that guy played and that guy played and uh, whether it's asking too much too soon or whatever, just a long, a laundry list of missed tackles. Mm -hmm. uh, one in the late, uh, late in the first half that cost the LSU 50 yards. I mean, I counted it off, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, yards after catch all night for Ole Miss. Give Lane Kiffin credit. He is one of the best offensive coaches in the game. He knows how to dial up a game. But last week, uh, this Ole Miss team went to Tuscaloosa. They only scored 10 points. Uh, the talk was their offensive line had holes and this yep. and that. But <laughs> tonight they did exactly what they wanted when they wanted. And Judkins had really yet to get going. This was the most yards he's had in a game all season. Before that, he'd struggled the top 70 wasn't near the century mark whatsoever. They couldn't stop that run game, and they just kept giving it to him. He had over 30 carries in this game. And, you know, I was confident in this defense coming into this game, Jacques, because I hadn't really seen them, in terms of the run game, buckle and kind of get run all over all game long. But, I mean, you go back to that Florida State game, and what has changed since game one? You know, I'm sitting there, and Coach Kelly even says, these are the guys we have. You know, there's nobody else we can roll onto the field at corner. There's nobody else we can put out there at linebacker. There's no instant magic fix. These are the guys that we have on the team that are walking through the door every day and they've just got to get better. So you know what? I guess we're starting to see the ceiling for this defense and perhaps this team and what the ceiling is is not the top five team that people thought they were coming into this. Well, season. it seems like LSU's recipe to victory every week is going to be, and I know it's stupid, yeah, we got to score more points than the other team, <laughs> right. but they're gonna, they are going to have to outscore teams in shootouts. Right. I mean, they are going to have to put up a large amount of points. And look, Jaden Daniels played an amazing game tonight. He threw some beautiful passes. Uh, Brian Thomas is really coming on as a junior. Uh, Malik Neighbors, as we know, is having a tremendous year. The rushing attack, LSU basically had two 100-yard rushers. Mm -hmm. uh, Logan Diggs, you know, we talked about running back by committee. Well, the committee is pretty much over. Logan Diggs is the chairman. <laughs> I mean, he's getting uh, close to 20 carries, I think. I think Emory, John Emory got like three carries. Yeah. Um, and then Jaden Daniels, your quarterback, had 99 yards rushing uh, with, the, with the losses. It put him under 100 yards rushing. But uh, from LSU, from a defensive standpoint, like you said, it's the old Rick Pitino, no one's coming walking through that door right. to save us. And look, fans right now, they're angry. They want their pound of flesh. They want us to shout at the coach and, and – and look, this is the situation Brian Kelly is in the uh, social media age. <laughs> he can't go out there and say, you know what, we, we just don't have the talent. I mean, we don't have the talented guys and throw the whole team under the bus. Right. And he can't say, well, we're going to have to, you know, address this in recruiting. Um, and, you know, I mean, I guess there's only so much truth he can say in front of these microphones right now. But the truth of the matter is, is that LSU football traditionally built on rugged, punch you in the mouth defense is playing on their heels and keeping their fingers crossed that the other guys screw up. And maybe that was just a case of tonight playing Ole Miss, a team that likes to go up tempo, a team with Lane Kiffin as the coach, so obviously they're going to score some points. But still, in the first half, it just seemed like there was no sense of urgency, like Ole Miss was doing what they wanted. We hadn't seen Ole Miss execute and put up the amount of points that they had 
all season in that first half. They were doing what they wanted, where they wanted, when they wanted. And really, a lot of it, I think, comes down to fundamentals. You talk about missed tackling. How about that last drive? You get a horse collar tackle penalty, first and 10 of the 16. What happens immediately after? A false start. And then a delay of game, I think, was that second penalty. That can't happen. you got a chance to punch the ball in there and take the lead with 10 seconds to go. You get back-to-back -back penalties. Then you're looking at a first and 20 from the 26-yard line, which has a very low probability of being completed. So it comes down to coaching. It comes down to players. It's really a wholesale failure. Yeah. Really, it's what it is. Well, and... Look, everyone is going to roast Matt House right now, LSU's defensive coordinator. There's all sorts of jokes about leave him in Oxford and this and that. But last year, LSU played Ole Miss in Tiger Stadium. Ole Miss jumped out to the early lead, 17-3, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And Matt House was given a lot of credit, and rightfully so, for making defensive adjustments. And in the second half, they totally shut them down. LSU's defense shut down Ole Miss. Tonight, uh, whatever they tried, none of it worked. Um, just taking a look at the stat sheet a little bit here. Uh, Ole Miss got 32 first downs. They ran it 49 <laughs> times for 317, and they passed for 389. So you, yeah. can, you can't say, well, we stopped the run and not the pass or vice versa. I mean, you didn't stop anything. 317 rushing, 389 passing. Uh, the third down conversions, 9 out of 16. And uh, on the penalty end of things, Ole Miss was penalized 11 times for 121, so the referees hit them good. Didn't seem to matter. It, 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 it didn't yeah. matter. I don't know if you could see behind us, but there is a little bit of trash on the field, and that's because the fans in the student section, Ole Miss fans, were, were throwing bottles and cans onto the field because LSU had taken control of this game. They were leading by at least a touchdown at that point, and it seemed like it was their game to lose. But, you know, we go back to game one, right, playing a full 60 minutes of football. LSU looked good in the first half against Florida State, not so good in the second half. And here you could say they didn't play too well in that fourth quarter. Yeah, and I guess that's another discussion how uh, the <laughs> Ole Miss fans handled this game. I mean, they stormed the field. Uh, the goalposts were crooked. Apparently, they tried to they pull them down. I mean, LSU had already lost the game uh, this year, and this game is in late September. I mean, so this didn't lock up a uh, championship of any kind or anything like that. And there was also the jokes about how Ole Miss honored their 2003, quote, SEC West championship team that LSU beat head-to-head -head and went to Atlanta, and LSU won the SEC championship and the national championship in 2003. But I digress, John Eads. <laughs> uh, so, at the end of the day, look, uh, give Ole Miss credit. Uh, they had a great offensive game plan. We wondered if Lane Kiffin was going to be licking his chops looking at this LSU defense. And a week ago, LSU played with fire. Their offense really had to be near perfect and salt away the final five minutes of the game to beat Arkansas in Tiger Stadium. Arkansas scored 31 points tonight. Ole Miss obviously takes it to a whole other level, knocking on 60 as they put up 55. Uh, and LSU throws a pass in the end zone at the end of the game trying to pull off a 56-55 to win, but it doesn't happen. Well, you say having to play a near-perfect game. I think the offense did play a near-perfect game today. The one imperfection was that early fumble, Jaden Daniels over there. Yeah. That was the only turnover in this game. That right there may have been the difference in this one. In a game where, you know, you're going punch for punch. They're scoring a touchdown, you're scoring a touchdown. You have that possession back, maybe they get a field goal. You got a chance to maybe kick a field goal and win when it all when it uh, when it's all said and done. Uh, Damian Ramos had a 56 yarder that he did not hit at the end yep. of the first half. Yep. You, yep. I mean, that's not you you can't shake your finger at that. It's a 50 <laughs> it's a 56 yarder, but it would have been a nice bonus going into the half. Uh, and then look, Jaden Daniels, 27 out of 36, 414 yards, four touchdowns. John of his nine incompletions, how many of those were dropped? I mean, he was near Couple. perfect. Yeah, Chris Hilton had one right over here, actually. Early yeah, the game. young freshman yeah. Caleb Jackson uh, out in the flat. Uh, it would have been an eight- or nine-yard gain. Um, and then so you got Brian Thomas, who was targeted ten times. He caught eight passes for 124 yards. That's good. Uh, Malik Neighbors, eight catches, 102 yards, eight, eight for eight. Eight targets, eight catches. Uh, and then Mason Taylor tied in five catches, 61 yards. And then Kyron Lacey, two catches, 51 yards. He had a touchdown as well. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, I think they have the yards after catch here. Uh, for Ole Miss, Trey Harris had 96 yards yeah. after the catch. Dayton Wade, 66 yards after catch. Jordan Watkins, 49 yards after catch. And uh, Cade Priestcorn, the uh, the tight end who seemed, it seemed like he caught more passes than three for 41 yards. Uh -huh. Every time they threw to him, he seemed like he was open for a crucial third down conversion. Well, going into those stats, again, lack of tackling. They didn't throw many 
deep balls in this game. I think it was a lot of crossing routes and a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays where the corner got burned and they were literally left in the dust by you know, 10, 15 yards. There's a couple of plays I saw through the camera where I'm like, where's the corner? All yeah. I see is the Ole Miss receiver streaking into the end zone and he's nowhere to be found. So a couple of macro points here. You can't rely on your offense to bring it like this every single week. You're going to run into a team like Alabama that plays excellent defense, and then your offense is going to struggle. Then what do you do if your yeah. defense plays like this again? So, yeah, it's the top offense in the SEC. There's no doubt about that. They proved that again here tonight. But that defense has to be something of a compliment if you want to do anything this season. Well, and I think this is a good place to end right here. It's an interesting crossroads in the NIL era. You know, where a lot of fans feel like a lot of players are like this. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And the whole transfer portal thing. How is this team going to hold together at this point? Mm -hmm. And are they, do they care about the LSU on the side of the helmet or not? Coach Kelly, after the game, said he feels like they do. They will bounce back and, uh, and move forward. But it will be interesting when they go up to Columbia, Missouri, uh, when it may be a little chilly next week. I looked at it, uh, said the high was 65, a low Ooh. of 41. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, Lambeau Field, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be a little chilly. Anyway, um, how how motivated will they go to go to, to go to Missouri, which is in the SEC, but still kind of a bizarre marriage, uh, Missouri in the SEC, and not your premier destination like the Swamp or Jordan Hare Stadium or Tuscaloosa, Brian Denny. So uh, yeah, Brian Kelly, um, he's in <laughs> he's in an interesting situation in his second year, getting paid ten million dollars a year. Uh, to, to be a leader, rally these troops, and get 100% effort out of them so the season doesn't go off the rails. And I think the vibe's a little different now versus that Florida State loss because now you got two losses, and in this four-team college football playoff era, that all but eliminates you from contention because there's never been a two-loss team in the playoffs. So how does the team respond? Yeah, after the first loss, it was non-conference. It was week one. You can build from there week to week. But now what? We're in week five, and you got two losses. We're not even in October. So it will be really interesting to see how they do respond. you got a top 25 team next week on the road. So there's not much time to go back to the drawing board. you got to go back to practice and bring it for next week. Yeah, the disappointing thing is, is that there's no dominant team still in the West, you right. know. Uh, and then Georgia, you know, was a bit shaky today at Auburn. There's never an easy game at Jordan-Hare Stadium, I don't think, but they just barely got out of there with a 27-20 victory over Auburn. So that's it for right now. For John Eads, I'm Jacques Doucet from uh, Oxford, Mississippi. Not good news for Tiger fans, a 55-49 loser to the Ole Miss Rebels.